Hey, hi, this is the Internet of Things show. I'm Olivier, and today we will talk about authentication security for IoT devices, and we have Tony with us today. Hey, Tony, how are you doing? Nice to see you, Olivier. Uh, nice, and uh, thanks for coming here. Um, Tony, w what are you doing at Microsoft, and which team are you working with? Um, uh, for the past four years, I've been working with the Azure IoT SDK team. Okay, so you're... Um, various the... languages and... Okay. So you're one of the guys actually making things work on devices to connect them to the cloud. To the hub. Yep. Cool. Um, so we will we want to talk a bit about you know security today. Okay. Because actually it's pretty key to IoT scenarios, right? Kind of it's, like you want to. It's wanna, a checkoff item. It is right. In particular, there's like these very particular scenarios about authentication. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure that the device that talks to me when I'm in the mm -hmm. cloud is the one that mm -hmm. it says it is, right? Correct. And vice versa. I also mm -hmm. want the devices when they receive commands or interaction sure. from the cloud to actually be sure that this is legit the, the legitimate type of one. commands, right? right? You don't want a fridge to turn off mm -hmm. and ruin your, your stack or something yeah. like that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so what do we have in Azure, uh, in the Azure IoT platform to establish that authentication today? Um, well, to make sure that you're talking to the right server, um, you're going to get that through some basic TLS uh, security. Okay. When you are originally making the connection, we only allow you to create a secure TLS channel. And during the course of that creating of that channel, you will quite, uh, quite well verify that you're talking okay. to the particular hub that you're talking, um, okay. that you want to talk to. Okay. Um, that that's one way you're val validating that the you're talking server. to the right server. Okay. Okay. Then there's the other direction. This, you know. Am I a client, the client who I say I am? Okay. Um, there are two ways of doing that in Azure IoT. Okay. Um, we have X509 certs. People okay. are like pretty familiar with certs. Well, yeah, basically okay. like server certs that we use to... Web. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, it's, it's, that also can happen during a TLS authentication. Okay. Or we have something known as SaaS tokens. Okay. Um, today, I hope we talk about SaaS tokens. Okay, got it. So, wh what's the principle of that SaaS token like? Is it like private, public key kind of mechanism? Um, well, it's um, we often refer to it, well, SaaS tokens, and yeah. the key idea there is a shared um, item, a shared access signature. Okay. And what's happening there is both the device itself mm -hmm. and the hub have are utilizing the same key for authentication. Okay. Um, and when I think about authentication, what I'm generally thinking is, you know, a mutually agreed upon protocol mm -hmm. where you have a secret. The cl one side or another has okay. a secret. Okay. And you're going to present some proof that you have the secret. You're not actually good. You're not, good. Sending, the you're not sending the okay, secret. Yeah. You kind of want to keep that in one place, okay, okay. but you're doing something that shows that you possess that secret. Um, okay. And th this general idea holds true both for certs and for SAS tokens. Okay, got it. Um, so you do some math on that, on that secret. Mm -hmm. you, you pass on that new token, right. right? Well, you do some math on that secret plus a couple of other items. Okay. Um, you, um, the SAS token itself, um, I could show you one. Would yeah. you like to see one? Yeah, let's, let's okay, let's see if we can see that idea. one. Um, nope. And, ah, here is a SAS token. Um, I don't know how clear this looks on the thing, but it says right there, okay. shared access signature. And let's just sort of break this apart a little bit. We have a thing called a scope. Okay. Um, and it's, you know, it looks like a web address for the most part, or, or an okay. endpoint address. There's um, the, the network address of the hub I'm working with, something that says devices. And then there's the name of the device that I'm actually dealing with. Okay. This device in uh, so device using, is called it's called Alice, Alice because okay. that's sort of a standard security uh, okay. So what, name. what I'm determining with that mm -hmm. is that each of the devices that are registered mm -hmm. in the IoT hub, they mm -hmm. have their own secret, right? They have their own secret. Got it. Okay. But there's another part here to the, uh, to the shared access signature. It's something um, we call the expiry or the, an expiration value. Okay. It's a nice big number, and all it is is the number of seconds since January 1st, 1970. 
Okay. Plus a little bit more, about oh. an hour more okay. worth a second. That's right. Um, and well, this is doing two things. It's providing some a, a sort of random little value that we're going to be using. Mm -hmm. Well, not random, but uh, something a changing value, an MFR, an ephemeral value. Okay. Um, and we need these two. Well, the other thing that that thing is saying it's only good for an hour. I mentioned it was time since 1970 yeah, yeah. plus an hour. This thing, got when it. it ends up being calculated, is only good for an hour. Got it. So if a device got, gets compromised, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. After an hour, if it doesn't renew with a process that we mm -hmm. understand and own yep. that key, mm -hmm. then it cannot connect anymore. That's correct. Okay. I mean, and the other thing is, I mean, I could take this SAS token, print it up on a bunch of pieces of paper, put it out in the parking yeah. lot, and if nobody picks it up for an hour, it's not going to do them any good at all. Okay. <laughs> okay. No, seriously. I mean, that's the way okay. it works. Okay. And the third item, um, it's called a signature. And to me, this is the real problem. Okay. Um, this is a value, like you were talking about before, you take these first two items right uh -huh. here uh -huh. and you can concatenate them together in a string. Nothing special there. Okay. You take this and then you take that secret that you're supposed to okay. share and you put it through a function. Um, and it's a hash function mm -hmm. and it has a really, uh, has a, that, the, the string plus your key. And the output from that is this really big number. It's okay. 32 byte wide number. It's 32 bytes, by the way, is 256 bits. And okay. it's known as a SHA-256 hash. You okay. may not have ever heard of one of these things before. Okay. Um, in the end, that SHA-256 hash, that is the value of this signature. Okay. Okay. And this, this whole thing here, basically, if we were to you know, run a sample mm -hmm. and turn on debugs, you would see one of these SAS tokens just flying up to the network, Got into the hub, okay. and the hub is going to examine it. Mm -hmm. And okay. <laughs> basically the description I just gave you yep. is exactly what the hub is gonna do. It's gonna take this thing, it's gonna break it apart, Okay. it's gonna do the same concatenate, Okay. And but the only thing you don't have here is the secret. That I sent across. It never, but never went through. It never went through. But the hub has a copy of that secret. So okay. it's going to take these two values, it's mm -hmm. going to run it through a hash, these hash functions. You get the same input, should always produce the should same the output. output. Yep. And it's going to see did it get the same signature? Okay. And if the signature is the same, it says, oh, that device is sharing the same Got secret. It. You're in. Okay. Start right. sending some data. Interesting. So that means that you need to have this key on the device, right? So yes. the code on the device. One way or another, that. it's got to be there. So, but actually, um, devices in an IoT scenario are, are certainly the most exposed piece of your solution. They're right? in a hostile environment. Right. They're in a place where, you know, you can actually hook them up. If mm -hmm. you're watching some, like, mm -hmm. famous TV show, you see that the freaking Raspberry Pi is the, the problem in yeah. the story, right? right. Um, but, uh, so, how do we ensure, what is the means that we have for ensuring that this device, if tempered, if, if abused, will not allow someone to get that key in clear. How do okay. we do that? Um, what we have, um, and this is a technology that's been, well, there's a couple of newer technologies, but there's also one that's been around for quite a while okay. on uh, various business machines. Okay. Um, it's the cheap part, and it's called a TPM, okay. which is a trusted platform module. Um, I got into a little discussion with somebody this morning. I try to think of these things as devices, where you can just sort of think of this as a module on the board that you're working with. Or okay. device. it can be very yeah, yeah. small, it's a small okay. part. Um, but it's something that is well, very good at doing some things. I mean, but it, it, you talk to it like you would say a normal device. You, it's a second device yeah. on the board. Um, you send it data. Okay. You send it commands, mm -hmm. and it'll do that chunk clunk whir, and out pops the result. Okay. okay. And what this thing is very good at is it's good at performing cryptographic functions, okay. these HMAC functions. It's good at doing encryption, decryption, and it's also good at keeping secrets. I mean, you could get this thing and you could try to examine the memory on it, but if you've said when you gave the device a piece of data and said, this is private, okay. you are not going to be able to get this. I mean, you could shave the top off mm -hmm. of it, you could try doing all sorts okay. of things, but it's not coming out. Got it. Got um, it. And this is um, you know, a pretty good method of 
securing this data. Mm -hmm. um, this technology is used um, on Windows machines for things like BitLocker. Yep, uh, yep. Very similar technology is used on Xboxes yep. to keep them from Got it. getting... Got it. And you were saying there's, there's uh, also other ones, right? We don't work only with TPMs. That's we right. Also work there are them. certain devices that are very good for um, certs. Okay. Um, and again, it's good at holding the secrets. I mean, when, even when you, when you have a cert, you can look at a cert and you'll, you'll see all sorts of textual information and public keys, but there's a private key associated yeah, with okay. that. Um, there are uh, hardware devices that will create the cert for you, but it'll always hold that private key mm. in that special area of memory that you simply so can't get out. Never see it. Never see even it. Even as a developer, you never see it. You no, you can. can't. Um, you can make it a little interesting so, to debug. Are we so are we doing something special? I know the answer, but uh, people don't know. But are we doing some spe something special to help developers who want to leverage these TPMs and other uh, hardware secure modules, mm -hmm. uh, you know, to make their life easier when it comes to, to doing what is specific to Azure IoT and authenticating through the secrets that are stored in there? Yes. Um, we have a, a, a technology mm -hmm. or a new uh, service offering uh, called the Device Provisioning Service. Okay. All right. Um, when before when I talked about, oh, like, let's connect up this device, I said, well, I'll copy a connection string from that and put it in my code. Yeah, it doesn't um, scale, Yeah, right? that doesn't scale really yeah. well. Um, the device provisioning service um, it provides a lot of different functionalities, but for the purpose of this talk, <laughs> what it really provides me is a secure way for IoT hub in its environment mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to create a shared key, get it to my device, okay. and do that securely so that me as the device, I know I got it, mm -hmm. but I don't know what it is. I, I never see it. I never handle it. Okay. I just sort of get this thing, send it down to the device, and tell the device, oh, this thing that I just gave you yeah. inside, wrapped up in all sorts of encryption, is a key. Okay. Unwrap all that encryption without me looking at it, mm -hmm. and just take that and store it in a special place. Keep it there. Okay. Um, keep it there even if the system reboots. And mm -hmm. later on, like I said, these TPMs are very good at doing encryption functions. They're okay. very good at calculating SHA-256 yeah, hashes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so later on, just, you know, a month later, if I need to, you know, connect up, yeah. I'll come in. I'll that same those same two pieces of information, the URI address mm -hmm. I'm going to have, the an expiry from that moment when I felt uh -huh. like I needed a SAS token. I'm gonna, just going to take that. I'm going to pass those two pieces of information down to the TPM. Okay. And TPM provide the give give me back that prize that signature. Got it. Okay. And it's already got the secret. It'll go clunk clunk or work click yeah. and out pops that signature oh, that we need so. as a SAS token. Yeah. We should just form it up. And we I'll send it up to the hub. Right. We're done. So that's interesting. So what I'm hearing is that basically we have a piece of like bootstrap of software, right? That we, mm -hmm. we provide that developers can put in their devices mm -hmm. that is not specific to that device in terms of like device ID or whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. The thing connects to DPS. Correct. DPS has a record of that device. So how do we how do we know the device is where he is? Like what's um, that, that piece Well, in of, the case of the current TPMs yeah. that we use that you normally see on Windows devices. Um, in the factory, um, there's burned a, a, an item. I mean, it's not like a, a MAC address or something it's else. Like it's a unique it's, it's, Yeah, it's a really yeah. long thing. It's like 2,048 bits or something. Oh it's really big. Well, in a sense, it's kind of a public key. Okay. 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 Um, and inside the TPM, there's a counterpart to it, a private key. Okay. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we do when we want to talk to the device is we send this thing, it's called, um, well, we'll just say it, we'll just okay. leave it at that. It's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. Is we send this public information up. Okay. And to DPS. To DPS. Okay. It's been, when it was manufactured, the manufacturer from the service mm. side gave this piece that it just burned in there. Okay. And it put it in to the DPS service so okay. that we, when the device wakes up, comes in and says, oh, here's this, you know, Big old long piece. Yep. I'm going to hand this to you, okay. and if 
find me in there and what's it going to tell me? It's going to tell me some good information. It's going to tell me what hub do I need to talk to? Okay. Because we didn't know what hub we wanted to talk uh -huh. to. All we know is that we're this yeah. device and we have yeah. this yeah. long thing. Yeah. And also tell me what my device ID is. What do you want me to be known by? Okay. Not this, nobody wants this long name. Yeah. It's, kind of, <laughs> it's hard to say. Okay. Um, and it's going to return that, those two pieces of information. Okay. And that's kind of what the developer who's writing an application cares about. But at the same time, like I said, that's a public key that mm -hmm. we sent. It can act yeah, as yeah, a public yeah. key. What that's going to also do in the response that's giving me mm -hmm. the, um, the hub that I'm talking to, my name, is it's also going to create a device key. Okay. The secret. So the, the and credential it's going to take we're that about, and yeah. it's going to, what can, you, what can you do with public key? With a public key, you can encrypt something. Mm -hmm. And you can, but nobody else can decrypt it except okay. for the person who's holding the private portion of that key. Mm. So it's going to wrap it up in this, encrypt it with this okay. public key information, send it back along. We in the SDK, when that, device, you're, when you're doing yeah. that initial bootstrap, mm -hmm. go through this saying, who, who am I? What am I supposed to do? Okay. We get back the other things. We give them the, the hub they're talking to. But okay. we take that part. We take this whole yeah. big sort of blob of yeah. encrypted yeah, data, yeah. pass it down to the TPM, and we tell the TPM, take this, break it apart. I don't want to see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And take the result, that encrypted mm -hmm. key that's the kernel of this blob, yeah. if you will, and store it in your non-volatile okay. memory and leave it around so that next time I come along and I want to do a set of shop, Utilize that, and then you can connect using that piece of information. Yeah, that's shit. That, yeah, yeah you, you have the hub that you know, Got but it. you never ever needed to know that secret. I mean, awesome. the things like the hub you're talking to and your device name. That, maybe you want to keep them confidential, but they're mm -hmm. not secret. I see. Those key, the, that shared private secret, though, you never saw it. You never had a handle. There was no way you could get to it. There was no way that anybody could get to get it, it yeah. as it's going over the wire. Awesome. So basically we have, and we have these in various SDKs, right? So if you're writing a Every one of the device, SDKs is supporting So we have C, we have Java, we have Node, we have Python, mm -hmm. um, all these languages supported for when a developer builds a device. Right. And we basically streamline that super complex and, and serious thing, which is If I was to do this in device, Node right, right now, um, I could run a little sample program and it would take 20 seconds at the most. Got it. Awesome. I mean, it's really pretty quick. That's good. So uh, yeah, we, we're going to add the links to the to the to the mm -hmm. SDK. That's pretty cool. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. That's it is clean, really clean Some explanation. Some people seem to think it's complicated. But super secure at the yeah. same time. Yeah, it well, is really secure. It's a it's a marvelous mechanism. Yeah. And, I had a and, great time with yeah. it. Yeah, and the beauty of it is that it was the scaling, right? So you yes. can actually have your devices in the factory. It comes out of the factory. They have this bootstrap, which is the same on all the devices. Mm -hmm. What is different is that unique ID, whatever the, the manufacturer mm -hmm. is putting in there. And then you register these devices in DPS, you tell them which IT hub they're going to connect to, and just when you connect the device, everything will happen by magic. And, uh, you know, I mean, the, the overall architecture that we have going on here, should someone come up with other secure enclaves? There are other secure enclaves in the world. Yeah. It wouldn't take very much effort to support to that. Yes. Awesome. Love it. Well, thanks, Tony. That was awesome. Thank you.